for inviting me on behalf of CERM. I'm looking forward to giving this talk and to hearing any questions that you may have. So uh, I'm going to start by giving you a background regarding CERM. Uh, the California Institute for Regenerative Medicine was created uh, through Proposition 71 in 2004. This is the citizens of California voted on a $3 billion bond funding for this institute. And it has been very successful over the last 10 years. Actually, it's uh, life has been it's almost 16 years, but in the last 10 years, we have made a lot of progress regarding both basic research, translational and clinical research, as well as funding infrastructure and educational backgrounds or programs. Um, the Citizens of California refunded CERM in November of 2020. And that was really exciting for everyone, including you know, many of us as scientists, as well as a number of our grantees and the Californians as a whole. And the funds continue to support similar pillars, but with added uh, a strategic plan that uh, will, I will describe in a little more detail the next few slides. So the new strategic plan, which was uh, approved by the board in December 2021, uh, is meant to enhance, organize, and interconnect CIRM's uh, model. It's based on three pillars, three principles, advancing world-class science, uh, delivering world-class solutions, as well as providing opportunity for all. This is the era where uh, paying attention to diversity and equity and inclusion is really important, not only in granting, but also in managing everything we do relative to the science that we do, including clinical trials. So what you might ask what CERM is all about and what do we fund and what does the new strategy emphasize beyond what I just mentioned. So I'm going to, the next few slides share some more about that. So the mission statement for CERM has always been our guide for doing the work we do. Uh, the new mission statement, which was also approved by the board in December 2021, is we are accelerating world-class science to deliver transformative regenerative medicine treatments in an equitable manner to a diverse California and world. Maybe it's surprising that we want to impact the world, but it is very important to us, to me, to explain to you how that works. So, um, again, briefly, in. Uh, in terms of CERM's contribution over time. CERM created in two, was created in 2004 and refunded in 2020. Uh, CERM funded 1,000 cutting edge transformative programs. Those include uh, basic science and all the other pillars, both in cell therapy and gene therapy and combinations. CERM funded 76 clinical trials in cell and gene therapy. CERM through funding the Alpha Clinics, which I will describe in a little while what they are, which is an infrastructure program that was established again in the first part of the, the tenure of uh, CERM. And, and I will tell you more about them later, but what's more important is that they've enrolled more than 2,000 patients over the last few years in, this, in these kind of trials, meaning cell and gene therapy. So the CERM five-year strategic plan, which is, goes from this year to 2027, is uh, uh, novel scientific endeavors uh, is a key, effective healthcare delivery models, and expanded education and training programs. Uh, one of the key hallmark and le likely legacy of CERM is that we are attempting to educate um, uh, both high school uh, Californians as well gra uh, graduate students and uh, undergraduate students in this area and creating a workforce that can be employed as physicians, scientists, etc. 
So we, again, a little more detail about the strategic plan. Under advancing world-class science, we are to develop competency hubs or shared labs. Those could include, like for clinical, where I, I actually spend most of my time along with translation, is uh, like new imaging technologies, new biostatistical uh, techniques, et cetera. Build knowledge networks, which includes potentially new databases that can be shared within California, the United States, and the world. Then deliver world-class solutions, advanced therapies to market approval. This is my highest priority for the next five years to assist many of our grantees who are in phase two or attempting to do a phase three on how to advance their programs to market approval. Create a manufacturing partnership network, which again is going to be very important for getting the programs approved as well as augmenting manufacturing capabilities within California and likely for the rest of the country. Expand the Alpha Clinics network and create community care centers of excellence, which is going to help us address the issue of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Then the last is provide opportunity for all, build a diverse and highly skilled workforce, deliver a roadmap for access and affordability. So the next few slides, I wanna share with you details of how our funding works for both the translation and clinical programs that I, as I mentioned, that I lead. So the funding pipeline overview is on this slide. We, as I mentioned, we fund discovery, translation, and clinical. It, the idea can go from a candidate, potential therapy or diagnostic, or a tool or a device, to a pre-IND or PID meeting, and then for the therapy, it will be an approved therapy for clinical. The budget for 2022-23 covers the numbers that you see on the slide. The largest budget is in the area of clinical. And the discovery and translation grants are reviewed twice a year. Mainly we accept grants twice a year in those two areas and usually are funded within three months of the review. Uh, with clinical, we accept applications for clinical grants uh, the last day of uh, last business day of every month, and so we actually have 12 cycles for clinical, and that has been the key uh, since I've started in 2016 with CIRM, where we accept those applications on a regular basis. Um, the translation program, which I'll give you a couple of slides about, can cover a therapeutic, a diagnostic, a medical device, or a tool. And the eligibility is what you see on the slide. Uh, the, it tends to be a relationship with either a stem cell or a gene therapy or a combination of thereof. And for TRAN4, it's really how to remove some bottlenecks that are the, if a, a, let's say, a, a research organization or an industry organization is facing in relationship to gene therapy or, or cell therapy. The translational program's funding limits vary. Uh, they go between 1.2 million to 4 million, depending on what they are. The duration maximally is 30 months for a trend one, which covers a therapeutic. And for profit organizations are to provide a co-funding of 20%. Um, want to explain that with translation programs, there's a distinct uh, uh, well, a key distinction from clinical in the sense that translation is solely funded in the state of California. It's research in California, uh, companies and academic institutions, they can contract with outside California uh, various uh, capabilities, but they have to be California organizations. We do not fund TREN applications for non-California organizations. Um, now I'll address the topic of clinical programs and the awards we uh, uh, provide in this area. Uh, we start with a CLIN1, which is an IND enabling studies. 
Uh, usually, in order for the uh, the applicant to achieve a pre-IND meaning uh, as the major milestone at the end of this CLIN 1, and usually those are 24 months long. CLIN 2 is a clinical, uh, again, funding clinical trials, and those, uh, the key eligibility criteria is that they have to have an active IND in which the clinical protocol has been blessed by the FDA. All the programs start within 45 days. We've included for the last few years also uh, CLIN 3, which is really uh, mainly for uh, satisfying any registration related uh, plans that the FDA stipulates. And those uh, we have had uh, none so far, but we're expecting to see uh, some in the next five years. And uh, the CLIN 2 and CLIN 3 uh, last, the duration is for 48 months, while CLIN 1 is 24 months. Here are types of eligibility, uh, for therapeutic or eligible therapeutic candidates for the CLIN programs. Uh, exam so essentially just drafted here examples. They have to be composed of stem or progenitor cells. Probably can read the slide. The key here though is that uh, the, uh, it's very important that we see these programs through uh, phase one, two, and three uh, with uh, following FDA regulations because we are, we again, as I pre mentioned before, a pre-IND meeting is important. We request for FDA minutes of those meetings so the reviewers can see them, as, as well as then uh, all of the work continues with uh, an IND-enabled program. Uh, the, um, the issue with small molecule and or biologic, uh, we have stipulated that the small molecule or biologic should be a mechanism of action to act on or de dependent on stem cells to be a therapeutic uh, modality and where a stem cell may be necessary for manufacture. For those two entities, we only fund up to phase one clinical trials. Things may change over time, but currently that's the case. So, the so, uh, CERM clinical uh, portfolio is shown on this slide. Uh, since 2016, that we ha we were have been able to uh, establish a machine, actually a clinical trial machine that moves these programs very smoothly from CLIN one to CLIN two, uh, and uh, from uh, essentially the translation to clinical. CERM funded 76 clinical trials. Uh, through 2021. They're in a variety of therapeutic areas, as you see in the pie chart. Uh, the, just to point out, it's probably reflecting what's happening in the science in these areas that our uh, portfolio covers three major uh, therapeutic areas, blood and solid cancer, blood disorders, and neuroscience projects are the top areas. Uh, other areas include what you see, like diabetes, kidney, uh, cardiovascular, bone, et cetera, uh, and ophthalmology. So the clinical programs award budget caps and co-funding. Uh, this is really important for everyone to know that for a nonprofit organization, there is no co-funding required for a CLIN 1. Remember, CLIN 1 is for preparing for a pre-IND meeting. Um, the, uh, uh, the idea here, again, they get the, the awardees funded for six million. For profit organizations, they get awarded four million and with a co-funding co requirement of 20%. Um, and then for clinical, uh, what we call CLIN2, which covers phase one, two, or three, uh, I just would like to emphasize that a phase two clinical trial can cover $15 million uh, for and with 40% co-funding for both nonprofit and for-profit organizations. It's actually one of the best deals we have, if you want to call it a deal. And then uh, the CLIN 3 is, covers 10 million uh, with 50% uh, co-funding. 
Uh, the main reason we uh, fund less for a CLIN 3 or a phase 3 is because in our estimation is most programs would be mature enough with a powerful safety signal uh, as well as efficacy that would warrant like um, having for-profit organizations to assist in taking over or working closely with these programs, whether they're in academia or small industry uh, companies. Uh, clinical programs allowable costs are shown here. Uh, in contrast to uh, the translational grants, uh, the again, the clinical grants, as I mentioned before, are awarded to Californians uh, and non California uh, organizations as well. The allowable costs are for Clin 1 research in California working with the CIRM Translating Center, which was uh, again a grant awarded to IQVIA to assist in uh, uh, helping these programs with all aspects of moving the, the again the grant towards either IND filing or through various stages of IND, uh, post IND. And then uh, for CLIN2 and CLIN3 non-California organizations uh, benefit, if you, if you were a Boston company can apply to CIRM, you get, uh, an, you have, let's say it's a clinical program, then you will have to um, set a PI in the state of California with various clinical sites and uh, the, you get, the grant will include fully loaded cost per California subject, and the preferred is would also to have manufacturing activities in California. Then those, let's say 15 million, you, the uh, Boston company can get most of those dollars if that's the, the, the way they assemble their clinical grant with us. So there is the uh, revenue sharing considerations for awardees. This is stipulated by the proposition. Uh, both Proposition 71 and P Proposition 14 maintain this. So revenue sharing is applicable, applicable only if the project is commercialized. 0.1% uh, per 1 million for the earlier of 10 years or nine times the award amount. It can uh, the grantee can convert the funds to a loan at designated times whenever they think they can afford it. Uh, and then the loan conversion terms can vary depending on the award type and stage of development. Uh, this is again per the proposition and we are always happy to talk to the grantee about how to manage all this on a stage by stage basis, etc. So I mentioned the IQVIA uh, Cell and Gene Therapy Center. As you can see, they can handle uh, many aspects of uh, the integrated program management for a CLIN 1 or TRAM. Um, the, this, that includes uh, being a CRO for clinical study execution and uh, any other issues related to CMC regulatory uh, or uh, Potentially, we've done also pharmacoeconomics, et cetera. Now we come back to the Alpha Clinics. Alpha Clinics is part of the infrastructure that the California, the, again, CIRM set up. It is a very important aspect that connects uh, a number of clinical sites within the state. Uh, there are five Alpha Clinics with six clinical centers. There are City of Hope. UC San Diego, UC Los Angeles, UC Irvine, UC San Francisco, and UC Davis. You, at, uh, through Proposition 71, uh, UC Los Angeles and UC Irvine shared uh, the uh, award. Uh, moving forward, we are about to uh, uh, put out a concept plan for expanding the Alpha Clinics and uh, re-awarding them grants, uh, depending on the applications. But uh, again, we're committed to seeing the Alpha Clinics uh, uh, infrastructure program continue into the next five years, at least. Uh, so the Alpha Clinics conduct cell and gene therapy trials for all those who are interested, and it's not limited to the CIRM grantees. 
So the Alpha Clinics can recruit other grants in this area and use the same uh, infrastructure to move them forward. They have a common IRB that train physicians in this area of medicine. They have a nursing training program. They really have been exceptionally helpful to moving our program, clinical programs forward. And so far, we, they have treated uh, over a thousand patients and have uh, managed more than a hundred clinical trials. Uh, we decided to include a case study for you to learn more about how really CIRM has an impact on, on some of these grants. So this case study is really to demonstrate how CIRM funding when applied to programs such as the one pioneered by Dr. Henry Claussen, you see his picture, who worked closely with CIRM on the development of his cell therapy candidate from the idea to a candidate to conducting a pre-IND meeting with FDA filing an IND and running phase one and a couple phase one, two trials. The total funding over the 10 years he received from CIRM is $33 million. By the way, Dr. Henry Claussen is part of the faculty at UC Irvine. In addition, he was able to set up a for-profit company called JSide that in 2020 entered in an ex-US licensing and commercialization agreement with Santan Pharmaceuticals that provided up to 252 million, which includes an upfront payment of 62 million in cash. So that's a really, uh, just as a one case study, we can, we can provide more if you're interested, but this is uh, the main reason I picked it because I'm the sci science officer for it and I have been shepherding it since 2016, and it has done well by the patients as well as by j and uh, Dr. Klassen. So in conclusion, I just wanted to reiterate that CIRM funds diverse programs from discovery translation, and the highest priority for my team and myself now is to move our clinical programs with a potential for market approval. And there we have organized, actually for the last few years, a clinical advisory panels in which CIRM on its own dime pays the advisors to be participate uh, in these highly confidential meetings in which the program is discussed and the advisors uh, uh, provide whatever wisdom they have regarding any challenges uh, or topics that the grantee is facing. And we run those uh, again throughout the year, uh, depending on the need for the grant. Uh, I want to leave you with the idea that uh, to confirm that CIRM is a cedar of innovative basic and translational biology. It's a patient centric funder. It's an accelerator for therapy development. And I want to thank you for your patience uh, since I was not available at the time I was supposed to be needed, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thanks. Thank you very, very much. We can take some questions now. Uh, okay, there's a question on the chat by, if I can say her name correctly, Zara Hameshin. Um, she's asking if we could let her know if funding supports are only for clinical companies or provides support also preclinical stage startups. Preclinical is allowed that goes in the area of the TRAN applications. And as I mentioned, the translation applications are fun funded twice a year. And so the, we just finished a round of TRAN. And so the next one is gonna be in June of 2022. Uh, is, does CIRM have a portfolio of CROs? If yes, how? Uh, this is Valerie Fremont. Thank you, both Zahra and Valerie. How can a CRO offer services to funded companies? Okay, the, we we don't. It is like uh, we don't recommend one CRO over the other to our grantees, but we're always delighted to learn more about CROs and whatever they have to offer, and whenever the opportunity comes we actually figure out how to work with them directly or indirectly. But a part of 
uh, we are actually, actually um, we welcome everybody to be involved in any of the work we do. I'm happy to answer questions after this discussion or this meeting. Uh, please I, uh, let me uh, put out again the, la the last slide. So you can contact me or contact our business development director, Sean Patel, who is supposed to give this talk but is not available today. And I'm happy to uh, collaborate with him on answering any questions with you or any follow-up that you may have.